I feel like I I want to maybe start sort of drawing towards towards some sort of close. And the last thing I want to ask you about before we end is getting a sense of integration. That is that is I'd say like one of the things that I I really took away as very unique is that your whole approach in consciousness medicine, every part of it, makes it so that from before you even start to how you regard the substance to the potentials to how you set it up to what might happen to what to do afterwards all of which may all of which is setting a, a very again not complicated but complex model for how to have that experience and then have that experience fit in your life after which mm -hmm. easily described as integration you know and mm -hmm. that the integration mm -hmm. starts before mm -hmm. the journey kind of thing um yes. And so I want to ask you about that, but I have this other piece that's kind of a non sequitur and before we go there, but I think it's important because I'm just, I mean, I'm just generally curious. And I also think it's important because oftentimes, uh, even in the psychedelic realm, we talk a lot about like all this deep trauma stuff and all this deep vulnerability stuff, but then we don't really talk about sexuality very much. You know, it's like, that's still one of those things that's a bit repressed. Um, even in us liberated people. Um, and so I, and, you know, I kind of like liberated because, you know, uh, I, a little <laughs> tongue in cheek. Um, but I want to ask you about that because you talk in the book about, you know, physical preparation is one of the se sections. And you speak about um, why the Mazatec people prevent uh, or stop any type of sexual activity for five days beforehand. And some of it makes a lot of sense for me. I mean, from a, from having a, you know, a history with what might call like spiritual sexuality practices or paradigms, I understand this sort of like the release of ejaculation is also the release of my vital forces in, in this kind of language. And even physiologically without any of that spiritual <laughs> stuff i mean like my motivation to go get them is a lot lower after i've completed my like what my ball my biology is concerned uh, as being the a priority of my existence right so um so i can i can see that it sort of like keeps that energy in and then so far as intimacy with other people it makes sense as you say like to try to like disentangle our energies with it from being with another person so we're going in with ourselves. all of this makes <laughs> right and good and beautiful um like it, it, it makes sense to me yeah and yet there's this other layer and maybe this is something that just is a total no-go in in the mazatec tradition and and let me know slash i'm also asking your personal opinion what about sex with psychedelics what about sex and psychedelics specifically intentionally to interweave and to and to tangle like to beautifully entangle ourselves with another person. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's great. I, th I don't have any. <laughs> yeah. I don't have any moral. I don't have any morality. I think it's just a matter of intention. It's a matter of ritual. It's a matter of sacredness. Now the Mazatecs, of course, consider sexuality and the mushroom a, a separate uh, activities, right? They consider, just to frame it in their language, so just to pay respect to their tradition, <clears throat> the, uh, the Mazatecs have no qualms about sexuality. They're no qualms about nakedness. They're no qualms about, I mean, they're very, very actually not uptight as far as sex goes. They don't have a lot of, uh, I don't know, uh, they're not Puritan at all. Okay? Mm. So just to preface that. So it's not a matter of, you know, puritany. It's a matter of when you are, when, what they call, you have to have your energy clean. It doesn't mean sex is dirty. It means what they say, the sucio, not sucio. It means that you want your energy to be yours, to be untainted by other people's energy. Right? You want your work to happen with your, the integrity of your inner, outer physical space. You want the mushroom to deal with you. This is, you take the mushroom, so you take the mushroom, you know? You don't take the mushroom and then there's a piece of the other person energetically in the field. And because they believe in energy lingering over the, over psyche, over bodies, over other energies, they believe in this, you know, that those days being essential for 
the integrity of the work happening only on your energy field, right? Mm. And afterwards, <clears throat> they also want your uh, a diet for after the mushroom journey because then you have to, the mushroom has to finish its work in you and not in you plus the person, right? So that's their that's their uh, view, uh, uh, which I understand and I I resonate. I mean, I resonate when I do a mushroom. You know, I want to I want to focus on my personal self. I want to. It's a deep uh, dive into my own very deep personal intimacy of myself with myself, and so I want to be in relation with myself, um, and I want to recover or whatever, restore myself with just me. So I understand the concept, and I understand the validity and the and the uh, the the preciousness of it and the merit of it. <clears throat> that being said, I don't think that uh, it is out of the question or out of the possibility of having of having sexual encounters in the space of some medicines, mushrooms. I don't know what uh, MDMA for sure. Or, um, uh, you know, cannabis, um, I don't know about ayahuasca, you know, how that feels. It gets um, a little messy with ayahuasca. Right. Gets a little messy, but why not? You know, on the lighter dose, why not? I mean, what's the difference between a light dose of mushroom and a light dose of ayahuasca as far as sex goes? Mm -hmm. Same thing. You know, mm -hmm. so, uh, so the, you, so the, you know, what's interesting is that some medicine like mushroom have been associated with you know, hanging out and party and possibilities of mm. activities. Ayahuasca was not so much associated with this because when it came online, it was really in big doses and well, beside the daime that is a little lighter, but it came within the context of, you know, there's no sex possible because you're just throwing up and shitting in your pants and you don't really have a lot of like a desire to be <laughs> sexual. But, <laughs> but on a light dose, on a lighter dose, just like with mushroom, you know, you don't feel like having sex when you're on six grams of mushroom and you're just losing your mind. Right. There's not much like sexual interest in that level. But, you know, the, 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 the possibility of, of exploring sacred sexuality or even awakening, um, awakening erotic self is very possible with substances. May they be ayahuasca or mushroom or other ones, as long as they are on a, on a dose that what, what, what the person feels has some agency, has some mm. consent, has some, has some clarity of mind. And again, it's valid in many kinds of substances. And then having a ritual around it or having intentionality, having really uh, an exploration that is uh, agreed upon. I mean, I know some people who have uh, trained in uh, healing sexuality and tantric practices and actual recovery of sexual uh, vitality through, uh, you know, sexual work with people. Right? I mean, this is a this is a sex therapy is a very very uh, uh, beneficial uh, healing modality, and when practiced with enhancements. Uh, of medicines, may they be whatever, whatever, whatever works, whatever feels appropriate. You know, as long as there is a contract, as long as there is strong agreement, as long as the healing is beneficial for the person, I've I've known people doing that work and recover an amazing amount of vitality and erotic identity and life, and it was wonderful for them. Mm -hmm. And they were on mini dose of ayahuasca, or they were on mini dose of mushroom, or they were on mini dose of, or some medium dose of MDMA or, or cannabis, and they were, you know, edible, and they were really a, a GHB, you know, in, in a, again, in an intentional place where people had agency over their, um, their exploration, right? And it was done in a, in a healing way. And there was a lot of merit, and a lot of people uh, recovered from, Having lost their erotic self after being traumatized with rape and, uh, you know, various sexual abuse uh, from their childhood. So I do believe that there is healing. I do believe that there is a possibility of recovering this essential part of our human experience through uh, enhanced experiences with, uh, with medicines. And it does, you know, it can be mushroom, it can be ayahuasca, it can be, I guess, mescaline, it can be... I mean, Anne Shulgin was talking about all the all the medicines that her and Sasha used to 
try, you know, and uh, flex with to see what works and what is the best can do it to a healing experience and a connecting experience. And I thought those experiments were very valid mm. and very beneficial for us to uh, to, to to explore. Um, I, I think it's not a matter of morality or good or bad. It's a matter of context, uh, intention, and agency. Hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. One thing that um, I, I mean, some of I feel I feel lucky or f I feel fortunate that early on in my life I came to recognize the the value of like deep vulnerability and presence in a sexual mm -hmm. relationship, whereas. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe not so much in my generation, but certainly in the generations of men that have come before me in in mm -hmm. Western society or like in modern Western society. Mm -hmm. and, and even still, there's very much like a, a, a dissociated mm -hmm. a dissociated relationship. Right. You know, it's it's right. very based in physicality. Right. I right. mean, on the extreme, it's essentially just right. like <clears throat> masturbating yourself with a woman's body, you know, so there's this real separation. And the, one of the things adding enhancements does <clears throat> is that it it sort of forces you to recognize how much actual vulnerability is really there when those mm. defenses are down which i think brings a, a deeper respect and reverence to the exchange of sexual sexuality between people and then from there the opportunities to explore and learn and grow and even if it's not necessarily healing even if it's like hey you know i'm with my partner or my wife and we're like hey let's take this substance and mm -hmm. let's let's make love on this substance and experience what it's like to be bonded deeply together in an sure. entirely different state of mind and that there's all sure. these opportunities. And I, I love the way you made very important clarifications that I think with the addition of these enhancements that it requires an even greater, although it already requires quite a great discussion, consensual mm -hmm. boundary setting, you know, all this mm -hmm. kind of things, but it requires something even greater beforehand you know, in order to make sure that the experience is positive for, for both people. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, sure. But it is possible to, for it to be just, why not? Like, let's, of course. let's bring this on board into our loving. Let's see what happens. Of course. of course. Very much so. Very much so. I mean, there are people who have, <laughs> I remember this woman, she came to Mexico with me, <clears throat> part of a group, and she had been recovering or um, recovering a memory of being sexually abused. And um, it was very tragic um, for her. She had been waiting for a long time to have clarity about that memory. Finally, the memory came up and, and she was feeling um, certainly a sense of relief for having remembered that. And then she came to Mexico with me. And during a group journey, uh, which we do there, um, Julieta, Julieta was there. She started to move. She started to move. She started to have this movement with her arms. And then she, she got off her mat. You know, she was like, like next to the next person, you know, being a, everybody was having their internal journey. She came out and she got herself in front of the altar between Julieta and the altar. Right? There was a space there in the middle of the room. She got on the ground on her, on her back and she was in a journey and she started to move her body. Her legs in the air, her arms in the air. She was kind of rolling around. And, and, and Julieta, I was like turning to Julieta and I said, cause I know she doesn't like this kind of behavior, you know, kind of, you have to be really respectful. And I said, well, if you want, I can go to her. She didn't speak Spanish. I can go to her and invite her to return to her mat. And she said, Oh no, let her be. She's healing her sexuality. Hmm. I mean, right there. And the woman was having this kundalini experiences. I mean, she was not orgasmic in the middle of the, I mean, like physically orgasmic in the middle of the room, but she was having a, a kundalini orgasm. She was having this just, you know, her body was completely uh, recovering, recovering. And it was an amazingly beautiful uh, witnessing to see her returning to her essentially her sexual vitality even though it didn't look like sex you know it didn't look like she was doing anything that we would associate with in obvious uh, sexual activity she was taught and Julieta totally got that she didn't have a sense of what had happened for her 
But when she's in the past of her life, but mm. when she saw her in the middle, she said she's healing her sexuality. Let her do what she has to do. And I never had seen Julieta say that in many, many years. And she's writing a book about it now. Because it's a, it's a, it's, it's a superb experience of what sexual recovery can look like. Mm, so mm-hmm, I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not saying it cannot happen within a partnership, you know, but I'm just naming that example that even in that Mazatec tradition, this healing of sexuality in that way was not just a metaphor and not just a, you know, whatever, like, oh, well, it's not really sexuality because she's not with someone else. It was very much her own sexuality that she was healing. <laughs> 